Hello, hello, this is Jeff Helvin with Balan Brands, and today I'm excited to show you the Balan's Sales Pipeline Campaign. So once you log into Infusionsoft, you're going to simply go up to the top left under the Infusionsoft icon, and under Marketing, you're going to click on Campaign Builder. Now in Campaign Builder, we'll see that we have installed the Balan's Sales Pipeline. So once we access the sales pipeline, you'll see that we've set up a series of functions that happen throughout the course of a sales pipeline. Now the sales pipeline, we actually have the opportunity to custom create each stage of the pipeline. So in this case, I'm using an example for the real estate market. And what we have is we have a, both a buyer series and a seller series. So there's a new buyer opportunity is, is that stage one. So as a new buyer comes in and we identify their new opportunity, the system will actually assign what kind of, it'll update the record in Infusionsoft of what kind of person they are. So instead of just a lead, maybe they're active or so forth. This is all customizable to, to your system. It's going to add a note to that contact identifying that they've been added to the sales pipeline. It's going to notify the owner of that lead to actually let them know that there's a new opportunity. So let's say, for example, what you're seeing here is on our team, we have Lori Ballin as the real estate agent. And as a lead comes in, then Lori Ballin gets a, a response and will assign a lead to one of our agents on our team. So let's say in this case, we assign it to David on our team. What will happen is Lori simply applies a tag in the system that indicates that David is now responsible for this lead. The system will automatically from there actually assign David the lead, make him the owner on that contact, and then it's going to send out this text message from Lori to David that says there's a new opportunity for, uh, we'll say Tom Smith in this case, new opportunity for Tom Smith. Please reach out and update accordingly. Now, if David doesn't respond, or update this particular contact in Infusionsoft, if, and one day passes at 11 a.m., it's going to send them a reminder that says, reminder of the new opportunity for Tom Smith. Please reach out and update accordingly. Now, from there, if David still doesn't respond, it's going to apply a tag in the system. And this tag, we can assign different rules. So in your case, you might decide that you just simply wanted to let you know so that you can manually reach out to David and ask him why he hasn't updated it. In other instances, you might actually want it to do more pursuing. You may want it to put David on a hold to where he can't get any more leads from the system until he responds to this. So it's, it's really meant to kind of help keep everybody accountable to what we're doing here. Now, once David reaches out, he's going to update this contact to move him into a pipeline stage, into another pipeline stage. So in this case, if David reaches out and doesn't get a hold of that particular contact, then we move them to buyer pending response. And what that means is that David reached out, but he did not connect. So in our world, what we anticipate that that means is that David needs to try again tomorrow. And if he doesn't connect with them again, he needs to try again the next day. So you'll see in this sequence that it identifies that David's um, tried to touch them and or reached out to them. And it's made a note that they're in the pending response phase. Then it's going to wait a day, and at 10 a.m., it's going to send David a reminder that says, make a second attempt to contact Tom Smith and update the opportunity stage. So he may do that, and it's going to wait a day. If it's still in the same pending response phase, it's going to ask for a third attempt. Make a third attempt to contact and update the opportunity stage, and so forth. So this can be extended out to run as long as you'd like it to run. But we have it run for basically three days so that there's three um, touches at a minimum that go out to a lead that identify that they would like to speak to one of our agents. So let's say David does get a hold of them and actually sets up an appointment. So then he would move them into the appointment stage. Now, it anytime you move a stage, it moves them out of the one that we the sequence that's running up here because once you move them out, it stops the sequence and then puts them into this one. Now, people can jump from this stage, new opportunity all the way down to A buyer, B buyer, and so forth. This doesn't have to run in order, we just have it organized, of course, in order of logical stages. So let's say that uh, we decide this gentleman is 
Tom Smith is an A buyer. We consider that ready, willing, and able. That's how we dictate an A buyer. Um, whether you call it a, an A, B, C, D buyer, whether you call them hot, warm, cold, you know, it's up to you on how you want to call these. And this can all be customized to match your the way your business works. So in this case, let's say we moved in an A buyer. That means they're ready, willing, and able. If they're ready and willing but not able, so basically if they're two of the three, we might move them into a B buyer. If they're one of those three, maybe they're ready, but they're not willing or able, meaning they're not motivated and they don't have the funds or they don't they need a down payment, but they're ready. You know, if those objections weren't there, they would buy. So we consider that a C buyer. Um, if they're not ready, willing, or able, but you want to establish a rapport and are going to continue to nurture them, whether it's three months out, 12 months out, or so forth, then we have the D buyer stage. So that's how we manage these and how we have this set up. Again, all customizable to how you work in your business. So in this case, let's, let's say it's an A buyer. What it does when they're moved to an A buyer, it adds a note to the contact so that we know that they've been moved to an A buyer. Then it's gonna wait seven days and send a text message, again in this case, to Dave, and it says connect with Tom Smith and update the contact record. So if for some reason Dave has not interacted with this lead in the last seven days, he's going to get a notification that reminds him to do so. Okay, If he has interacted with that particular lead in the last seven days, well then he can simply just mark this uh, ignore actually. He can simply ignore this particular message because he knows it's already done. So the system is not actually checking whether or not Dave has made an update. It's simply saying that if he's an A buyer, then once a week you're going to get a notification making sure that you've connected recently. Okay, so that's how that's set up. If it's a B buyer, we have it set up to pursue every 15 days, so about every two weeks. If it's a C buyer, we have it chasing our agent about every 30 days. And then if it's a D buyer, because it kind of indicates they're not ready, willing, or able, we have that one set to 90 days. So every few months, you're going to reach back out and see if their circumstance has changed. So that's the concept behind the, the way we have this set up. Again, all customizable. If you like to do things more aggressively or less aggressively, it's completely up to you. Now, we also have moved into escrow stage. So once someone actually does move into escrow, they have an offer accepted and they move into escrow, Right now we simply add a note, but this can be built on to be more custom for your business where it actually includes follow-up steps to the actual escrow process. So let's say we remind David a week after they're in escrow to make sure he set up a walkthrough or to make sure he set up an inspection. Uh, whatever course that you take, we could even add a, on the seller side, you'll see that we have things like long-term nurture, short-term nurture, and then we also have active in MLS. Well, we could have it to where once it's active in the MLS or maybe even coming soon that it sends a text message to the sign company to put up a sign. And then maybe after, you know, further down in the stages when it's in escrow or under contract, we could actually have it remove the sign. You know, things like that. So this is again very customizable but simply set up to help follow the stages of a sales pipeline. Now I have a separate video where we addressed how to manage opportunities, so I'm not going to do that here, but wanted to give you an introduction to how the sales pipeline is set up. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you, team at balanbrands.com, and we look forward to hearing from you soon.